morning, I'm Lynn, and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Didn't rain yesterday, but it feels like it might rain this afternoon. We're still keeping our fingers crossed on that. Um, it's hot and humid still, but today we have a little bit of a wind, which is making it feel a little nicer. And we forget about the wildfires that are going on in Canada because Recently, the wind's been blowing the smoke in a different direction, but apparently east of us, um, again, they're registering the worst air quality in all of the world. So as much as I feel sorry for them, I really hope it doesn't blow this way. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. Morning, there's a lot of noise going on in this main barn. And that's because today was another sales barn run, which means um, none of these guys have been fed because Arnie's in Ottawa. So I'm going to clean up around here, give these guys as much food as possible, um, and we'll keep on doing chores until Arnie gets back. Okay, I just finished the first coverall, and I understand that in the United States, right now it's way hotter than here, but we are in the 90s with the humidity factor today again, and if I was on the porch with a drink in the shade with my little fountains going, I'm sure it would be a beautiful day, but working in it, it's unbearable. Like. Like, I'm literally, I may as well have had a shower in my clothes. And it's not like I'm, like, doing anything really, really heavy work. But, yeah, one barn down, three more to go. <laughs> and Arnie's got a lot of hay to roll out when he comes back, too. So, I don't know how much work we're going to do today. Because after we've done feeding everybody, I have a feeling we're going to be exhausted. But anyway, I did manage to get all the grain to the ewe lambs here and the lambs with moms and I kicked in all their hay. So at least this barn Arnie doesn't have to deal with till tonight. It's complete finished. Barn two done, still alive. Okay, last cover all to do. I left the main barn till last because it was so loud in there because they had no hay whatsoever. I'm going to kick this in so I can get the decibel levels down in here too. Barn three, and I'm overheating on a massive scale. So I'm going to just sit down here and make a mental note to myself to call the pharmacy today and order a refill on my asthma spray because breathing's very difficult today and I'm getting low. Um, I guess uh, this is a good time to tell a story about these guys. So as I told you, we did a sales barn run today. And these are all the rams that got left behind that made the final cut. Um, they all have red marks on them. And I was in the house doing dishes. And Arnie was supposed to move the market lambs over to the other barn because they mark walk really easily. But then he came running to the house and needed my help because he had taken all, we had four in the market lamb group that were younger that we had marked and um, did DNA testing on. So they had to get moved into the keeper pen. So we did that, but when he was taking the market lambs over, he noticed that he missed one. There was one with a red dot on his back. So I had to help him catch that one and take it out. But he had taken four lambs out of that group already, so that means he took one of the wrong ones. And this is the one. They're all fed. They're all fed. They're all fed. And so this, this guy, he threw over into the keeper pen, but he wasn't a keeper. But we have a kind of little philosophy here. I had a look at him. He was up on his toes. He was looking pretty good. So whenever something kind of weird happens like that, where one that's supposed to go to market ends up in the keeper pen by some twist of fate, 
we keep them. So this is the lucky ram. Probably his name should be Lucky because he got to stay with the rest of the keepers. So that's my story. And even telling that story created more sweat. <laughs> He's back. So he just fed the noisy barn. So everyone's happy. What do you think about today? Hot. Not too bad. I don't find the heat that bad, but it's bad. Really? Yeah. You've been driving in an air-conditioned cab. No, not really. Have you looked at me? What? Have you looked at me? <laughs> that's right. I don't have anything dry on me. Well, that's going in the air-conditioned air. <coughs> dry air, eh? Which one of us has been working harder? <laughs> okay, move you guys. These guys don't want some straw in here. For sure. Dirty. We're having the same problem in the barn right now as we do in the winter. Um, the bedding's getting really wet. So we're going to be rolling out straw today. Normally in the summer we don't roll out too much straw at all because it stays really dry. But in humid conditions, everything gets sopping wet. Okay, we got cooled off in the house because we do have a really old um, three brick um, thick house. So if you keep the windows shut, it's actually, it feels like air conditioning in the house. So we got nice and cooled down. And now we decided to spend the afternoon deworming these keeper rams. And the reason we're doing that is because some of them have pretty bad diarrhea. And that's usually a sure sign of parasites. And Inevitably, the rule is if one has it, they all have it. Occasionally, if only one shows it, we'll just treat one. But there's a couple, so we figure they've been out long enough that they probably all have them. So we're going to treat them all. This isn't a highly energetic job since we just run them through the chute. They're starting to get used to it now. The more you do this, the better they usually are. I think there's only like 23 rams here anyway. So it should only take a few minutes and then we are going to lock them off the fields for a little while. Um, probably three weeks so that the worms will die out back there before we let them out again. And in the meantime, they'll be cleaned out. They got a big pen here to run and play in and some fresh hay that we just cut off the field. So they'll be okay. So as we deworm these rams, I guess I'll tell you what it is that we're looking for when we make the decision that it's time to actually deworm them. In the case of these guys, we had one that had diarrhea and then a few days later another one came up with diarrhea. And right now there I think there's about six of them that had diarrhea. And that's a sure indication that they have some sort of parasites. Not sure what type, but they do have a parasite. That's what causes their upset stomach to produce diarrhea. So we know that they have worms. Another way to tell if they have worms is to look at their eyeballs. So. I didn't do it with these guys because I didn't think about it at the time, but tomorrow I will get one of our pet sheep and I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do it and what to look for in the eye. But basically you're going to take their eye and pull their lower eyelid down and that skin around in the eyelid should be quite pinkish, like dark, a dark pink color. It should definitely have a nice rosy hue to it. It shouldn't be pale or white. And likewise, the eyeball around the iris, the white part of the eye, 
you should when you look at an eye see little veins and stuff in the eye and they would be red too in a sheep who has barber pole worm this is an, a test for barber pole wor worm specifically um, if they've got that worm that eyeball is going to be bright white it, it'll look like um, you know you'd been out for a bender and in the morning your eyes are all bloodshot so you put that uh, little clear eye stuff in your eyes to make your eyeballs white that's the white means that they've got parasites because if the eyelid and the eyeball is white it means they're anemic and what the worms have been doing is they've been attaching to the inside of their stomach and intestines and they're literally sucking the blood out of them to the point where now you can't even see it in their skin coloring and in their veins so that's if your eyeballs are white they definitely have worms so you want to be um, deworming right away and that barber pole worm that causes the anemia like that also can often present itself first before you look at a sheep's eye because it is a lot more difficult to go look at sheep's eyes. Um, but what will happen is they'll get like a really swollen jaw. It'll go under their, under their jaw and around their jaw and it'll look like, it will literally look like a water balloon. And when you feel it, it's really squishy and liquid. That also is a sign of barber pole worm. Um, if you see that, you're gonna treat with a white dewormer. The white dewormers treat barber pole worm better than the clear dewormers do. So that's what we're using today. We're using Valbazin. It's a white dewormer. Um, nobody is symptomatic of barber pole worm in this group. There's no white eyelids that I could discern and no bottle jaw, just the diarrhea with these guys. Um, but lambs in particular are susceptible to tapeworm. I haven't seen tapeworm either in these sheep, but in order to determine if your sheep have tapeworm, as you're walking through the pens or the fields, at any time of year, you should always be looking at their poop. Because tapeworm, it's not one of those nasty ones like barber pole worm where it sucks the life out of them. The tapeworm actually live in the sheep's gut and they'll be eating all the sheep's food. So they're going to start losing condition because the worms are eating most of their food and the sheep aren't getting any. But as as the worms are developing in their gut, they break off little segments and it falls off into the poop. I believe that's how it happens. And when you're looking on the ground, you'll think it, um, it looks like little pieces of rice in with all the poop. And it doesn't, it can be in diarrhea or it can even be in just the solid normal looking um, poop. So, but, but if you ever see little things that look like rice in the pen or in the field, you know you've got a tapeworm issue. And it's not one that you have to get to immediately, like it takes a long time to grow a tapeworm, but you're feeding, you're feeding the worms and you don't want to do that. So again, the white dewormer is the only dewormer that treats tapeworm. So because these are lambs, Lambs, for some reason, pick up all the parasites a lot quicker than um, the adults because probably they haven't developed any sort of immunity whatsoever yet. So we like to start with the white dewormer when we do the dewormers just because it's most likely to get every single type of intestinal worm that they can get and we feel a little more comfortable. Next time around, we would try to substitute with a clear dewormer such as Ivomec, uh, just so that no d resistance develops with the worms. However, if it's a worm like tapeworm, Ivomec doesn't work on that, so you'd have to use the white dewormer back to back. But these are the type of things you're looking for in your sheep to determine if they have worms. 
and that's if you don't want to do fecal testing. Um, if you really want to find out what type of worms your sheep have, you can do random sampling of your the pen they're in or the field they're in, and you'll take it into your vet or um, someone who can do the samples for you, and they will tell you what type of worms they have and which type of dewormer will, will work best for them. We used to do that. We kind of stopped because the vet that did that lived an hour and a half away. And basically we just deworm now when they're symptomatic of worms. So like I said, these guys started getting diarrhea and their lambs. And they've been out on pasture for about a month. All these things add up to parasites um, pretty well no matter what. So we are treating them. Once we get to that level of like six lambs, we figure it's time that we get to it. Nobody's looking sick. Nobody's losing condition yet. But nobody wants to have diarrhea, and especially at this time of year, because dirty tails and dirty bums are going to lead to another problem, which is maggots. Flies will be attracted to that diarrhea and the dirty wool, and they will lay their eggs in there, and then they'll get maggots. So, yes, you want to keep your sheep as clean as possible. So, hopefully that uh, tells you a little bit about what we're looking for and how to do it and stuff. And like I said, tomorrow I will... Um, try get like maybe hot lips or something and show you her eyes because some people will say am I really going to notice between a good eye and a bad eye and the answer is absolutely yes because if you look at a few sheep and they're all kind of pink and you think well are they a little paler or are they not are they and then you get the white one it stands out like it's it's it, you can't miss it. It's like, okay, I get it. When you see that white, you'll know it. And if you're not sure, is it pink enough or whatever, it probably is fine. That's how, that's how we do it anyway. Uh, yeah, maybe other people would disagree, but that's what we do. And that's what we're doing here today. And actually, our adult rams got barber pole worm. We noticed it because a couple of them had the bottle jaw. So when we rounded them up to deworm them, we checked eyes at that time. And sure enough, there were, were a lot of white eyeballs. And we've been treating them for a while. We have a sick pen of them. But actually, um, now that I'm thinking about them, maybe I'll go back and we'll check the eyes on them tomorrow. When you, ha when you only have this many sheep, it gets pretty easy to work with them. So today we are basically trying to keep on working because we don't want to get even farther behind but doing jobs that don't require much physical labor so we got all the keeper ram lambs done which is a good job um, done. Doesn't require a lot because we've got the shoots so anything to make your jobs go easier is always a good thing. And we just rounded up these big guys again and brought them inside and dewormed them again. We had dewormed them a few weeks ago, but um, we were deworming and finished the bottle of dewormer and a, f a few weeks ago and we noticed the expiry date was expired. So now we didn't trust the dewarming. And because a few of these did have bottle jaw, we didn't want to take the risk. So we bought some new dewormer and used the fresh stuff, stuff on them just to be certain that we got every parasite that we possibly could. And right now Arnie just put the bucket on his tractor because we did get a bit of rain and there is a lot of bedding like that's on the platform right now. And as we were walking in there, it was really squishy to walk in. And if, it, if I can feel the squishy in the water um, splashing around under there, um, 
like I've mentioned in past videos, if they're walking in wet conditions, even though there's concrete underneath and nice clean straw, it is a breeding ground for parasites and infections. So we are trying to avoid that at all costs. So we're gonna scrape the platform clean because we are expecting more rain today. I mean, look at the clouds. It says rain later on this afternoon. So we don't want it getting any worse. And in fact, if we can get it all scraped off before the rain comes, the rain will do us the added bonus of actually cleaning up any debris that's stuck to the concrete and having giving them a really, really clean surface to walk on. So, and that means he just has to sit in a tractor. So even though the air is not pleasant to breathe, it's not physical labor. So one thing is that there's always something to do. So you can work around every type of situation. And right now, I guess equipment work is what we do or shoot work. Buddy, don't get in the way of the tractor, okay? Yeah, I know. I know. You don't want to go near that tractor. I think the next thing we're going to do that doesn't require manual labor, but does need doing right now, since we have taken pretty well everyone except for the young ewe lambs, they're still out at pasture because they've got really big pastures and show no sign whatsoever of parasites yet. So they're still outdoors. Everyone else is in. So all the ones that are in, we're going to try bush hog their paddocks down because they've all seeded out what grass is left. And like I have mentioned before too, if the grass has heads on it, it's not growing anymore. In fact, now it's getting coarser and less palatable and they're not going to eat it. So it's just tramping and it's no good. You want that nice fresh regrowth. And the way to get the regrowth is just to chop the remaining stuff down. But you can see where he was, how um, wet that concrete is underneath. It really needed doing so. Sometimes when conditions aren't great and you think there's nothing to do, these are the perfect times to do this type of thing because on better days you, you ignore this stuff and everything has to be done. But you'll be glad you're not here right now because the smell is not nice. <laughs> you notice, normally if we were doing this like in the winter, all the rams would be running around and trying to get out of the gate. In fact, you can't even see that the rams are in here. These are the big guys in this pen and all of them are behind this wall here. This is the wall they go behind in the winter when it's really cold because they can get warmth in there, but it's also darker. So they go in there for shade, but unfortunately, shady confined is in this weather kind of really hot in there. So they probably would be better out if they were sitting out on the platform, but their instincts tell them to go where it's dark and in hot, humid conditions, that theory doesn't work. The thing we're most concerned about with them walking in mucky conditions is getting scald. Scald are, um, is when they get bacteria or, uh, yeah, it's bacteria between their toes in with the mucky stuff and it sticks there and it's rubbing as their toes move and they walk and it creates a little sore between the toes and as more and more bacteria get into that open wound now it becomes infected to the point where it can if left untreated it can turn into foot rot which is a really severe condition in sheep 
um, where they can be lame, where their hoof can actually rot right off. Um, we've never ha ever had it go to that extreme, but I have seen it happen with others, and it's not pretty. My buddy meows at me the whole time I'm here, and I gotta keep him away from the tractor, because he has to be involved in everything. Buddy. I was sitting there I know I looked in the field here which is also gonna get push hogged but there must have been corn that got put out here somehow and we've got corn growing in here and it's actually way taller than the corn that we planted <laughs> oh my goodness I'll show you how tall this is it's quite funny actually That's way over three feet tall. Because there's a lot of organic matter here. Arnie's been putting backfill in here with a lot of manure and stuff in it. And obviously there was corn in it. So when he bush hogs here, I'll tell him to leave this little corn section alone. Then later the sheep can come eat it. <laughs> done and it looks perfectly clean now. A little stinky all the boys are back in here just gonna clean out their drinker here and then we'll be done while he's at it he decided to get him a fresh bill of hay nobody's moving at a fast pace today come on Katie a little faster that's it good girl He's come to join us too. So they're getting some nice, this hay was just cut last week. So they should be happy about that stuff. What's it look like on the inside? Perfect. It was a dry year. It's pretty hard to make a bad meal. Well, yeah, although if you tried to do it today, boy, that's humid. Fresh hay. So when I see all the rams there and I see nobody there, that's a surefire clue that that hay is not edible to them. And because it's kind of dirty in that little cavern that they go into back there, I told Arnie to take that out and we'll use that as bedding. They can lay on it now and get another nice fresh bale. Sheep tell you what they want and what they need. People will say it's being fussy, but, and they'll eat it if it's uh, that or die, usually. But why, why do that if you've got the feed? It's different if you're, you're in dire conditions, but if you're able to, why not treat your animals the best you possibly can? Okay, so he's gonna tip it over. good look at his feeders. These are the special ram feeders because they have wider bars so they don't get their big blockheads stuck in there. However, when people talk about do they waste hay this way, the answer is in this, these feeders, yes. Um, the hay comes out a little bit more. But we never really find that hay is wasted.
just anything that ever comes out we use for bedding and you have to buy bedding so if it's stuff that just came out I don't really consider it wastage and it's not like hay is more expensive than straw in a lot of cases the straw is actually more than the hay so everything it gets used at the farm nothing goes to waste A lot of noise going on out here and I'm making dinner and I gotta summon him in right now so we'll see what he's up to and it looks like he has decided to bring out the bush hog and cut down the field that the little lambs were going out on they're in the barns right now because the pastures weren't growing up so he's cut it down looks really nice now and in a few weeks once it, the grass is about six inches high we'll let them all out again and it's evening now so it's a lot nicer now I actually survived the heat I didn't die but oh this morning was terrible so we're going to get have dinner now. I'm going to summon Arnie in. I hope this video was informative and you enjoyed your time with us today. If you did, please give us a like and be sure to join us again tomorrow to see how the eyes actually look because I, I will remember to grab a few sheep and we'll have a look at some eyeballs. Until then, bye for now.